Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the continuation of our kinematics video. So we have an original video. Uh, please do watch that video. Hopefully you've watched that video and now we're continuing uh, with other sections. Um, and then uh, like the video, uh, subscribe to our channel as well. We would appreciate it if you can just support the channel. And then also just uh, click the notification bell so that whenever we upload a video, you can actually just know that we have uploaded a new video otherwise guys do enjoy and just make sure that you follow and leave a comment as well all right and then we are going to start another section which is called uh free fall that's the section that we're going to start looking at now all right now it's just basically objects that are just uh, falling um and the only effect there is just gravitation so normally call it free fall i call it free fall now this is basically you're saying there is no air friction so let's think of it like it's a day where there's just no air friction all right it's just nothing the only thing that is going to affect whatever it is that you're throwing is going to be only gravity all right so this is what a situation whereby someone has a ball they throw it up, the ball goes, 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 and then it eventually stops and turns back. And when it turns back, it turns back, increasing speed, increasing speed, and then hits the ground. Right, so I'm drawing it like this because uh, I just want to show you what is happening. But then when you're saying, when you're saying free fall and you're looking at what dimension, what you're looking at is you're throwing a ball, the ball goes up, the ball goes up, the ball goes up and then eventually the ball stops here. And then after the ball has stopped, the ball then starts coming back. Now when it's coming back, it's blue now. It's coming back now. Somewhere here is blue now. Now as it comes back and then it hits the ground. Okay? With the velocity, some velocity. Okay? So it is going up and then it's coming down in the same line. But now what I will do is I will draw it like this so that you guys can understand. But this is not the proper way of actually drawing it. Another way maybe that I could draw it is I could say the ball is going up. Uh, it's going up. And then um, somewhere here it stops. And then it starts coming down. Right? So it will be coming down in the same direction. And then it starts coming down. This is now when it's coming down. And then it hits the ground with the velocity V. So it went up with the velocity v0, comes back up with velocity v1, it stops here with the velocity v1, sorry, then comes back down with the velocity v2, and then this is the ground that it started, and then this is the ground that it's going to hit when it comes back. Now when it comes back, that's why when you throw something up and then it comes down and it hits you, uh, it's very painful because as it went up, it was slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, because in order for it to change direction, it has to slow down. Just think of it like you have a car, you are going that way. If you want to change direction, you can't just increase speed, increase speed, and change direction, increasing speed. You're going to roll, you're going to cause an accident. So what you're going to do is you're going to go, 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 stop, and then change direction and then come back. All right? So in order for you to change direction, you must stop. So that is why when you get here, uh, the velocity actually has to stop. All right? So now what I have, I have two situations. I have a ball. In order for this ball to go up, I mean, if you just hold it on the ground, it's not going to go up. So in order for it to go up, you must push it. So you are giving it an initial velocity. So you must give it an initial velocity. All right. Now let's just say that the initial velocity that you're giving it is, is 40 meters per second. All right. So it's going to go up, go up, go up, go up. And then eventually it's going to stop. So it's going to go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, and then stops. All right. So when it stops, the velocity here, when it stops, V1 is going to be um, uh, 0 meters per second. And then after that, it's going to come down, come down, come down. And then it's going to hit the ground where it's from with some velocity V2. And that velocity, if it started at V1, if, if it's, it's hitting at the same position, right? If it's hitting at the same position that it started, if this is the ground and it's coming back to ground, then and only then the speed is going to be the same. We are going to show this on calculations, right? We can calculate it and then we're going to show. We're going to do that later, all right? Now, if you look at it, when it's going up, right? When my object is going up, 
it is slowing down. So what do you know about objects that are slowing down? If an object is slowing down, it can only mean one thing. It can only mean although the object is going up, the acceleration has to be going the other way around in order for it to slow down. And then it stops. That is why it is stopping. It is stopping because it is slowing down, slowing down, eventually it's going to stop because it is being slowed down by this acceleration. Okay. And then after stopping, the acceleration doesn't stop acting that way. So the acceleration keeps acting that way. And then what that actually does to the ball is it forces the ball to go down in this way. But now if the acceleration and the ball are in the same direction, what you expect is you expect it to speed up. So that is why when I taught you guys acceleration and deceleration, I emphasize this because I wanted you guys, I knew we we're going to use this. Uh, so you need to be very careful and all the time understand that when something is slowing down, it means that it is going up or it's going in a particular direction, but the, the acceleration is in the opposite direction um, of that object. And then when it's speeding up, it means the acceleration and the velocity are in the same direction. So this minus 40, this minus 40, the minus is just telling you that it's going, so for instance, this plus here is going up, this minus is going down. That's all it's saying. But the magnitude, how, how fast is it going? It is going at 40. Here it comes back and hits the ground at 40. That's the magnitude of the speed, the size of the speed. All right. So that is very much important. All right. Now from here, what we are then going to do is we are going to uh, continue. And then I am going to tell you um, about this acceleration. So if there is no friction, it turns out that the earth, you're going to do it when you do, when you do forces. When you do forces, I'm going to show you that the earth is always pulling things down. That is why when you jump, you come down because the earth is always pulling things towards itself. Okay. So, and the force that the earth uses to pull things towards itself is called the force of gravity. And that force of gravity is related to acceleration. And the acceleration is, is called the acceleration due to gravity. So, when you have objects that are going up and down without any friction, and the only influence that is actually being experienced by that object is due to the force of gravity. Now, that acceleration is called the acceleration due to gravity. And it is written as G, which is the acceleration to, to gravity. All right. Now, this acceleration due to gravity has a value. The size of this value is 9.8 meters per second. Right. So it's been measured. You can measure it with a pendulum. There's many ways you can actually measure G. All right. Now, um, this is the size, so which means that the acceleration that you have here, A is going to be equals to minus. Why minus? Because it is pointing down. That is why it's going to be minus. It's going to be minus G, which means that A is always going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So it doesn't matter whether the object is going up or the object is coming down. The acceleration is just pointing in the same direction. Most students make a mistake of thinking that when the object is going up, the acceleration is also going up. When the object is going down, the acceleration is going down. Don't make that mistake. Whether the object is going up or the object is going down, the acceleration is always pushing it downwards. Think of it like this. There's you, you are trying to jump. But as you are trying to jump, there's something that is trying to push you, right? So you are trying to jump, right? And then, but then there's something that is pushing you downwards. So that thing that is pushing you downwards, that's the acceleration due to gravity. So what will happen is that you will not go very far. You'll just go and then come back down, all right? Why are you coming back down? Because you are feeling a push. So when you are going back up, you'll be feeling a push, a push, a push. When you come back down, you'll be feeling a push this way. When you're going back, when you're going up, you'll be feeling a push that way, downwards. When you're coming down, you'll be feeling a push downwards. So which means that you'll be speeding up when you're coming down. So just think of it like that as well. Okay. Just think of you having something heavy on top of your head. What, what happens when you try to jump? When you try to jump, it's very heavy. It's like it's pushing you down. 
Then when you're coming back down, it's no longer feeling that heavy because you are coming down. It's actually pushing you because you are coming down. All right? Okay, so just think of it that way as well, and then that's going to help. All right, so we are going to then, I'm going to show you three cases that generally you would find uh, that are very common in this type of problems. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you the equations of motions that we can use for this. And then, and then maybe we'll just do like one example or something. Okay, now if we do that, for instance, the common cases that you'll find is you, you have an object that is launched from ground with a velocity V0 whatever that velocity is, I'm going to put a question mark. Then the object is going to go down, go down, and then come back down, and then hit the ground. So whatever the velocity was for V0, so this velocity here, here is going to stop. So here, at maximum, all the time, this is going to be V is equal to 0 meters per second. All right? It's always going to be 0 in one dimension, right? <clears throat> uh, and then we're going to... For the university students, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> for the university students, I am going to teach you guys, um, I'm going to teach you two dimension. And when I teach you two dimension, and then you're going to see that you have to consider the X and the Y. So, but then for you guys, like metric and also first year, we also do introduce this at university from one dimension. So for now, just say at maximum, the velocity is going to be zero. Now, at minimum, for instance, if the velocity here was 40 meters per second, the velocity here is going to be 40 meters per second. The only difference is it's going to be negative, right? So, which means that the magnitude of V0 and the magnitude of V2 are going to be the same, all right? This is true. For instance, when the object is here going up and the object is in the same position but going down, the velocities at these two at these two points are going to be equal. If I call this V3 and I call this V4. So if, for instance, I say V3 is like 25 meters per second, then V4 is also going to be minus 25 meters per second, as long as they are in the same line, all right? As long as they are in the same line, they are going to have the same velocity. So it doesn't matter where they are um, when, they, when the object is going up. It doesn't matter whether they are going up or down, it's the only thing is just the difference is going to change. So, for instance, this one is going to be negative. That's the only difference. All right. Another situation that you can have is maybe you have someone who's standing on top of a building and the building has a height H. Then what happens is they extend their hand. They extend their hand. There's their hand. And then they are holding a ball. Right. They extend their hand. Then they just release the ball. When they release the ball, the ball is going to hit the ground with some velocity. When they release it, remember before they release the ball, the ball had a speed of 0 meters per second. So when it hits the ground, it's going to hit the ground with some speed. Let's just say maybe it's going to hit the ground with 40 meters per second. It depends on the height. If the height is taller, it's going to be hit the ground with a higher velocity. It's going to be minus. Sorry, I, put, I forgot to put a minus. Uh, let me do that. Let me behave. All right. So V1 is going to be minus 40 meters per second. All right. So the higher your height, the more this velocity is going to increase. But the lower your height, maybe like for instance, if your building was this tall, then maybe this thing was going to be like 10 meters per second. So if your height is small, this becomes smaller. If your height is longer, this becomes higher. All right. So this is when this is another case whereby you can have. Another case is you still have a person on top of a building, but they throw the ball up, remove their hand, and then the ball comes down, and then it hits the ground. So the ball was thrown up, so they released it maybe with an initial velocity, let's say it's 25 meters per second. And then maybe somewhere here, is going to stop before it turns. This is going to be zero meters per second. And then afterwards, it's going to come down, come down, then it's going to hit the ground with a velocity V2, which is going to be some velocity. Maybe let's say, for an example, this is going to be 50 meters per second, minus 50 meters per second. Now, most students make a mistake of thinking that, no, because it was launched at 25 and then the velocity has to go into 25. It's not true. 
the velocity is going to be 25 when the ball is somewhere here but going downwards because then it will be in the same line right to be in the same line then here then the ball let's call it v3 then the ball is going to have minus 25 meters per second only there but then it will keep increasing 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 if you look at that situation for instance if i draw it with a, a red a red a red line if you look at this situation here is similar to the situation that we had here right so it would have started at this point comes back at that point so it starts at that point now it's at that point all right so that is why you can say now at that point from here to here it is similar so you can find for instance the distance that it can travel the maximum distance you can just call it y0 you can find also the distance from here to here right let's call it y1 right so the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here you can find them depending on the information that you are given all right now how can you find all of this information the time that it took to get to maximum how can you find the information for instance if you want to say i want to know how far it traveled over a period of time how can you find that information all right so <clears throat> let us try and just do an example I will do maybe let me just do I'll do this example um, and then I'm just gonna show you uh, all right so you can use the equations of motions to calculate for whatever situation here all right so let me say you have an object that is going up with an initial velocity of v0 comes up and then maybe it's going to end somewhere okay let's just have it end it somewhere here all right now since the acceleration is constant this is v1 which is zero meters per second then this is v2 which is going to be minus whatever the value of v0 is all right this is what is going to happen all right now if you look at this situation here what you are going to have is you can actually use the equation of motion because when the object was going up and down when the object was going up it left with the velocity v0 and then it reached here with the velocity v1 so you can use the equations of motion because it is under the acceleration which is a which is going to be equal to 9.8 so our acceleration is constant and then when it was coming down again hitting here it is still under the same acceleration the acceleration is still constant the acceleration is still minus 9.8 meters per second squared so you can use equations of motion so this is from v1 and then it hits here with v2 so you can use equations of motions so those equations of motion and the distance for instance from here to here or from here to here is going to be the same the distance for instance from bottom to top you can call it delta y if you want so you can find any distance and the time maybe took from here to here you can call it delta t for instance if you want you can use equations of motions and say well so if i know that i can say the final velocity whatever the final velocity right minus the initial velocity so it depends what which point is final which point is initial i'm going to do an example now that is just going to encompass everything um, and then you can understand everything plus a remember a you're going to put a negative delta t can also use this one that says the final velocity squared is equals to the initial velocity squared plus 2a delta y remember delta y you are, to, you are using delta y because everything is in the y direction then you can also find this delta y to be given by v initial delta t plus half a delta t squared you can also find this delta y if you know the average velocity from here to here you can find the average velocity which is going to be v initial plus v final it doesn't matter whether you put final here initially it doesn't matter multiplied by delta t so you can use these four equations of motion to actually calculate why you can use it because the motion motion is under constant acceleration so remember whenever motion is under constant acceleration you can actually find this thing out all right okay 
Now let's just do an example here. I'm just going to put the values and I'm going to say calculate the time it will take to reach the maximum height and then find the total displacement. Um, find the, yeah, find the total displacement, find the total distance so that you have the difference between the two. What will be the total displacement or the total distance? Maybe find out the time, the total time that it will take and then what, how, how long it will take to move from, um, point A to point B. So that's just what we are going to calculate so that at least you have some form of uh, an example as to how you can actually find things out using this thing. All right. So there you are. You have a ball. It is launched at 40. V0 is going to be 40 meters per second. And then of course it's going to go up, going to go up. Somewhere here it's going to stop. So this is going to be V1 is equals to zero meters per second and then it's going to come down and then hit here when it hits here um v2 you don't know what v2 is going to be we're going to calculate it all right and then um the distance that it took from here to here let's call that distance delta y zero the distance that it took from here to here let's call it delta y one all right, the time it took from here to here, let's call it delta T0. That's the time it took from A to B. From B to C, let's call that time delta T1, All right? So what we are going to do is we are going to find delta Y0. We are going to find delta time zero. We are going to find, um, what else are we going to find? We are going to find delta y1 we are going to find delta t1 then we are going to find v2 right that's what we are going to do all right so let's start with delta y0 how can we find it right so what we know is that the acceleration at each point it doesn't matter it's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second right whether it's going up, even this side, the acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared, right? So it doesn't matter. So if I wanted to find, for instance, the easiest one to find, let's first find the time, right? We can actually find, okay, you can find any area. If I wanted to find delta y is zero, what I would do is I'll say the final, so I want to, if I say it's from A to B, that's what I can use to find delta y0 from A to B. So the final velocity at B is V1 squared. The initial velocity is V0 squared plus 2A delta y0. Why? Because y0 is from A to B. So it's very important that you use then the velocities from A to B, right? Some students make a mistake and always say, no, the initial velocity is V0, the final velocity is V2. No, it depends what you're looking at. It just depends what you're looking at. All right. Now, let's see. What is this one? This one is 0 squared. What is this one? This one is going to be 40 squared plus 2. Here, where you see A, you're going to put minus 9.8 delta Y0. So delta Y0 is going to be equals to... Minus 40, you take it this side. I think this is going to be, um, is it 1,600? Um, I, I think so, no. Okay, let's see, 40 squared, uh, 40 squared, um, yes, it's 1,600, all right? So basically this is going to be minus 1,600. Now I'm taking it that you already know how to do the math, divided by two, minus two, times 9.8, which is going to be equals to 1,600, uh, two times 9.8. Uh, this is going to be 81.6 meters. 81.6 meters, right? And it's positive. Why? Because this is going to go this side, become negative. This is zero. It's going to go this side, become negative. You're going to divide both sides by 2 times 9.8, right? So I'm assuming, guys, that you can actually do this. I've been solving this type of equations for some time now. 
So at this sections by this time, you should know how to actually go about it. All right. Now, what about, what about delta T0? We can find delta T0, right? It's the time from A to B, right? The final velocity we have, the initial velocity we have. So we can use the sequence that says V1, V0 plus A delta T0. Okay. What is V1? Zero. This one, 40. This one, minus 9.8. That's very important that you put the minus delta T0, right? So which means that delta T0 is going to be minus 40 divided by minus 9.8, which is going to be equals to divided by 9.8, 4 point something, 4.1. Seconds. So it's going to take 4.1 seconds to move from A to B. All right. So this is going to be 4.1 seconds. All right. So how about if I want to find delta Y1? For instance, if I want to find delta Y1, right, the final velocity is um, maybe should I erase? No, I don't want to erase. Okay. All right. So if I want to find delta Y1, Delta Y1 is from here to here, but now the issue is I don't know this. I don't know the final velocity. And so, but then what I do know is that the ball started at the ground level and it's gonna, it's gonna hit the ground level. So whatever the distance I travel from here to B is going to be the same from B to C because it's the same distance. So you can see that Delta Y1, Delta Y2, this, they are basically the same size. The only difference is delta y1 is the ball is going down. So this is going to be, for instance, if I say y0 here and I say y1 here, right? So this is going to be y1 and then this is going to be y2. So if this is, this is going to be zero meters. So we've calculated this one and we found that this is going to be 81.6. So which means that this is going to be 81. 0.6 this level this distance here this level is going to be 1.6 then this one is going to be zero meters because it's in the same position so if i want to find delta y1 it's going to be equals to the final which is y2 minus y1 what is y2 well y2 is zero this is minus 81.6 so it's going to be minus 81.6 because it is moving from the same position here and then back to this position here meters so it's minus because it is going down it's telling you that the ball is covering a displacement going down all right now if for instance if this wasn't the case more information you should have been given more information for you to work it out all right now from here um, you can find the time that it took to move from the top to bottom which is delta t1 Right, you can find that. I mean, you already have the displacement, so you can use that. I mean, you could say delta y1 is v0, but now what is v0 for that position? Because you are moving from, if you want to find delta t1, delta t1 is from point B to point C. So which means the initial is point B, the final is point C, all right? So the initial speed is going to be V1 because at B, the speed is V1. And then at C, the speed is V2. All right. So since you don't know V2, it's best that you use this equation, which is going to be V1. You want this delta T and then um, you already have that and then plus half and then A delta T1. So you want this delta T1. All right. So you can't use the equation that needs you to have a final velocity because you don't know what is the final velocity, right? You can calculate it afterwards, all right? So what is this one? This is minus 81, 81.6. This is going to be zero times delta T1. I don't know what is that. Plus half minus 9.8 delta T1 squared. I forgot to put a square here, all right? So this is minus 81.6 is equals to, you have that, you have that, um, what is that? Uh, it's 4.5 and then 0 0.4. So it's more like 4.9. Uh, it could be 4.9. Uh, it's 4.9, right? Okay. This is 4.9. 
uh, minus 4.9 delta t squared right so what you're then going to do is you're going to say delta t1 squared is going maybe let me do everything here so that you understand minus 81.6 divided by minus 4.9 4.9 right and then this is 81.6 divided by 4.9 all right and then whatever the value is 81.6 divided by 4.9 this is 16 point this is about 16.7 all right 16.7 so what do you have now you have that delta t1 squared is 16.7 7. So what you do is you square root both sides. Don't take the negative value. Remember when you square root, you have to say plus or minus. But then since you're looking for time, you're just looking for a positive value. So you just square root for both sides and just take the positive value. And then the positive value for that one is going to be the square root of 16. Uh, eight. Square root of 16.7, which is 4.1. So it takes exactly the same time that it took. So the time it took to go up, it's the same time that it took to go down because it covered the same distance. All right. So let's calculate the final speed. So I'm just in a way proving to you or showing you how you can find this. All right. So let's calculate the final speed and I'm going to clear this. Now, if I want to find the final velocity, so let me use a green pen. So if I want to find the final velocity, right? So I can just use, now you can find the velocity from A to B if you want. You can find the velocity from A to B. And as long as you know the total time, right? Or you know the total displacement, then you can do it, right? The total displacement, you know it is gonna be zero. So, so you can actually find out the final velocity using the total displacement of zero. For instance, if you do it like that, uh, but let me not confuse you. Let's just use B to C, right? We're going to find the total displacement from the total, the final velocity V2 from B to C. So if you do it like that, the final velocity is going to be V2 squared. And then the initial is going to be V1 squared because it's from B to C uh, plus 2A delta. What, what does the distance? The distance is delta Y1, delta Y1. Okay. So this is going to be this one. I don't know. This V1 here is 0 squared. This is plus 2 minus 9.8 minus 81, 81.6. All right. So if you do it like that and then you find V2 squared, V2 squared is going to be 2 times 9.8 times 81.6, which is 1,599. All right. So it's close to 1,600. All right. And then you square root that, you square root both sides. If you put a square root on both sides, then just square root the answer. And then you get something like uh, 39.99, which is 40. Right? You get in 39.99, which is approximately 40 meters per second. All right. Now, when you square root this, you have to put a plus or minus. You have to say plus or minus. Then you have to choose whether it's plus or minus. How you choose whether it's plus or minus, you go to your sketch and you find out is V2 going up or down? Well, V2 is coming down, so I'm going to choose the minus answer. All right? So I'm hoping from maths you also know that when you square root both sides, the other one is becomes plus or minus. All right? Let's find this using the total displacement and see if we can find the answer using the total displacement. All right? So just to show you another way that you can find this thing. All right. So what is the total displacement? The total displacement, remember, we said that the ball is going up. When it's going up, it covers delta y0. When it's going down, it covers delta y1. Now, the total displacement, delta y, you can find it in two ways. You can say it is going to be y2 minus y0, which is going to be 0 minus 0, which is 0 meters. Another way you can find it, you can say the total displacement is delta y1 plus delta y2. This is a very safe way to find it because let me say, for instance, the ball was stopping somewhere in mid air. This would be the, to the best way to find the total displacement. Um, it's the safest way if you know those two displacements. This is 81.6 minus 
um, sorry, this is minus 81.6. Um, <clears throat> what am I, oh, this is going to be zero, which is, oh yeah, and then plus that, sorry. This is going to be zero, which is plus 81.6, and then this is going to be plus, this is going to be plus, and then this is minus 81.6, right? And then this is going to be zero. So you can find it in two ways. So the total displacement is zero. So you can use this equation that says the initial, the final velocity is V2. The initial velocity is V0 squared plus 2 A delta Y, the total Y now. Now, the reason why you can find it for the whole thing is because the acceleration is constant, whether the object is going up or going down. So you can use any interval. You can either use the interval from A to B, you can use the interval from B to C, or you can just use from A to C. It doesn't matter because acceleration is constant in any way, right? And you can also find the total time uh, using that. You can either find the time going up and down, or you can just find the time using the total displacement, right? Um, so if you do this, this is going to be V2 squared, V0 squared, Plus, if you substitute this, this is going to be minus 9.8. This is zero. So this is going to be zero. This term is going to be zero. So you find that your, okay, actually, let me just do it properly so that I don't confuse you guys. Then you substitute this. This is 40. Is it 40? Yes, it's 40. 40 squared plus 2 minus 9.8 multiplied by zero. Then you find that V2 squared is 1,600, right? Then you have to choose plus or, and then you have to choose plus or minus when you put it under the square root, and then you have to choose the minus because it's going down, and then this is going to be 40 meters per second. So you can see you can find it using this way, or you can find it using that way. It doesn't matter. If you wanted the total time, for instance, that it, would take, that it took to go up and down in this case, the total time is going to be so the total the total time in that case you are going to use delta y if you want the total time so you could say well um <clears throat> can you actually use a lot of equations let's say just we use that the velocity to velocity at, at zero plus the acceleration delta time so you could actually use this to find it what is the velocity at that? This is 40. What is that? This is minus 40. And then what is that? This is uh, this is uh, minus 9.8. Um, this is minus 40, minus 40. This is minus 9.8. This is minus 9.8. And then the time is going to be what I'm looking for. All right. And then when you actually do this, and then you find that you take this, this side is going to cancel. And then I made a mistake here. It's supposed to be plus 40 because remember when it launches, it launches with plus 40. And then when it comes down, it comes down with minus 40. So I made a mistake here. It should be plus 40 here. This is minus 40 here. So that makes sense now. Take this one. This side is going to be minus 80 because it's going to be minus 40 minus 40 and then this is minus 9.8 delta t so therefore my delta t is going to be 80 divided by 9.8 and that is going to be equals to 8.2 seconds another way you could find this is if you know delta if you know the time it took to go up and the time it took to go down you add the 2, which is 4.1 plus 4.1, and then you find that this is 8.2 again, because we already found these times. So that those are the different ways you can actually find the total time. All right. So this was a long lecture. Um, it was a fun lecture for me. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. Uh, do subscribe. Um, do like the videos as well. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in um, the next lecture. Cheers. Alright, so I think this is it uh, with this section and then we'll see you guys in another section. Uh, cheers.